Welcome back to the show, you beautiful, amazing marvels. Hi, Dana. How the heck are you? Hi, Gwen. And hello, Neural Marvels. How is everybody? I love it. Um, hey, Dana and I, uh, we need to clear the air. Um, and we need to make a distinction today. We're, we're, yeah. we're two women on a mission. <laughs> Maybe we should just start screaming and do a demonstration of a tantrum. Oh. Because I'm gonna, willf I... I'm willfully angry about something. I my my HOA is telling me to cut one of my beloved trees down, and I'm really angry about it. And I'm gonna have a temper tantrum. So I'm gonna <laughs> that choose is, that would be that would be a that would be a temper tantrum. A tantrum. I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to scream yeah. or ignore them or like I was last night at 1:30 in the morning when I couldn't sleep. I finally just screamed in bed, and then I fell asleep, and that was a tantrum. Oh, like a primal scream, like a, like a yeah. good deep primal yeah. scream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That, but that's that different be... than a different than a meltdown. Oh, okay. so are you saying that we're going to distinguish the difference between a tantrum and a meltdown? And a meltdown? Maybe we should. You I know what? A what idea. a great idea you had. <laughs> <laughs> All you know, people get accused of having tantrums. We see this a lot in All the time. Parents saying this or family members saying this about an autistic child or a neurodivergent yeah. child, right? Yeah. Yeah. All the time. And and here, you guys, you guys, here's why Dana and I feel really strongly about doing, you know, one episode on it. And mm -hmm. that is because if we misinterpret the intention yeah. of behavior, mm -hmm. we can do harm yeah. by overly, by being punitive yeah, and actually exacerbating and making a situation worse. And shaming the person yeah. having the melt, excuse me, the meltdown. Imagine yeah. you know somebody who has a seizure disorder and they have a seizure in front of you and you start yelling at them, stop, why are you doing this? You just need to stop having a seizure. That's yeah. what it's like telling someone who's having a meltdown to stop having a meltdown. It's really similar. Yeah. And do you want to explain? So um, I think we should, I think we should, I mean, yeah. in general, and I think the word temper tantrum is a very colloquial term mm -hmm. and it's a, and it's a general term that, that parents use to describe misbehavior in, in sometimes grand proportions. We might <laughs> see this, you know, at the grocery store when we're going through that impulsive last minute aisle, when we're checking out, right. Mm -hmm. Um, and funny, it's maybe not you yourself as the parent who are assigning that word, but maybe other people uh, who you yeah. don't know who are saying, yeah. <laughs> oh, whoa, that kid's having a tantrum. Right. Um, right. And, and um, I think for us, because our community really, really struggles with meltdowns yeah. and you would never support a meltdown like a tantrum. Yeah. Right. Um, we just wanted to clear it. You know, tantrums are, are willful. Yeah. And what we mean by willful is that they're volitional. They're decided upon. They are intentional. Mm -hmm. I know that this is the rule yeah. and I'm okay. going to break it. Yes. Yeah. There, it's a power play, right? That's right. No, I don't That's like right. this. Yeah. 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 Um, it, we're not saying, I'm not saying tantrums. So a lot of times tantrums are unhealthy ways to express my anger, my resentment, my frustration mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. but, um, they are willful though. And, and meaning they can be controlled. Yeah. So that's yeah. one thing. Maybe not easily controlled, especially if you're a little kid who doesn't, yeah. ha hasn't learned a resource yet to modulate and, but for me, it's always like, if you were in the middle of a temper tantrum and a plane crashed next to you, would it snap you out of it? It's probably a tantrum. Do you know what I mean? Something could be even <laughs> higher that can that can regulate it versus a meltdown. That would probably yeah. make it worse. Right. Yeah. It wouldn't stop. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's like very simply what we believe, what Dana and I are going on record yeah. Uh, with saying what a tantrum is. And Dana, yeah, actually Dana, Dana, for those of you who 
who don't know this, Dana has a really lovely community that she has on TikTok and um, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, mm -hmm. And Dana really communicates beautifully through memes. It's so phenomenal. I mean, she's going into this TikTok short real space, Dana. Oh my God. I'm, well, I just what? sort of posted on there and said, I'm a total dork. I never was like, you're not a dork. Keep going. So I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, we love we well if you are a dork, we want more dorkiness. Um yeah. we are going uh, to I, this is a great yeah. term, by the way. It's a total tangent, yeah. but we are a dorkable. Yes. Yes, I, we say that, that a lot in my home. Yeah. I didn't know that one. I love that. Love it. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. My 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 husband my husband calls <laughs> he uses that term with me. Oh <laughs> that's no. adorkable. And I'm like, thanks. That's a compliment. Well, there Talk you go. dirty to me. Oh, wait. Okay, wait. Uh, All right. Uh, <laughs> let me so okay, let's <laughs> get let's let's go to let's go to meltdowns. We are oh, having wow. way too much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have meltdowns. too much fun together. Meltdowns. meltdowns da, da, are... And this is a really lovely thing. Uh, for those of you that are listening, um, you know, uh, we have a we have a meme that that Dana created for her for her site and her socials, but Dana, yeah. it's up on the screen. You wanna you wanna talk about what a meltdown is? Yeah. So uh, meltdowns and tantrums are not the same thing. So you've already talked about tantrums being willful, and the purpose of the behavior is like that power play to get something or to get your way. Um, if you get your way, the outcome feels good, right? Meltdowns are uncontrollable kind of explosion of feelings or sensory, you know, just blowing up. Um, and it's usually following cumulative experiences, things that mm -hmm. have contributed to it. And then you sort of reach the breaking point and explode. Um, we know that those are neurologically based uh, overload um, that can't be controlled and doesn't feel good. So, and, and like, if I have these, I think before um, I came out as autistic, um, especially to my wife and she had that frame, and sometimes I can just blow up about something and just like want to scream or whatever. I can see it sort of scares her a little bit, but um, since knowing about my neurodiversity, it's changed the frame. Now it's sort of like, oh, you're, you're at a breaking point of something or you wouldn't be expressing it in this way. And so a tantrum, you know, you, you, I'm not a parent, right? But I was trained on parenting in my grad program. And a lot of what we learned is what is the purpose of the misbehavior? What are they trying to get, mm -hmm. right? And you, mm -hmm. those are helpful interventions for a tantrum. For a, um, for a meltdown, someone's neurologically and sensorily at a point where they can't contain themselves anymore. And so frustration or anger or maybe even just uncontrollable crying um, or needing to get away, like fleeing behavior, that kind of stuff, are all ways of trying to deal with that massive, it's almost like an emotional seizure, right? O that overload. <clears throat> and what's best is to uh, get quiet and find out what that person needs in that moment, get them to a safe place, bring that sensory stimulation down, make it stop, right? So if there's a loud sound and that person is, has gone into that meltdown phase, get them away from the sound, cover their ears, do whatever they need to bring that sensory stimulation down. And it really is, I have nothing in my, um, in my bag of tricks that I can neuroregulate anymore and I'm freaking out, right? And so for me, I'll yell or kind of throw things. I've learned over the years what I can throw safely, right? I, I got really mad at my dad's wife once. I won't get into the whole story, but I picked up a wooden chair that I had and I threw it and I lived in a little studio apartment. And then the, the, the leg of the chair went right through another, another beloved piece of furniture. And I'm like, well, that didn't work. So I really learned from that. So now if I have to like physically do something, dish towels, I'll throw dish towels because I can, I can throw the crap out of them and they'll go like three feet, <laughs> right? But I get that I get that release of like, uh, and or screaming if I'm in a place that I can scream. The car is great for that. And a lot of that I learned, and I've, I've mentioned in here before that I was in bodywork therapy for many years. So a lot yeah. of those tactics I learned how to not even knowing I was neurodiverse then tactics to get sort of that that energy out. All right, um, and it's not pleasant. You know, I don't like scaring my wife. I don't like getting to the point where I'm so overwhelmed. I can't, nothing is soothing. Right. Yeah. And when you're in meltdown, you're not always able to identify 
what you need or how to get out of it. Right. And so sometimes needing the other person to help you is really, is really key. Yeah. And, 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 and like, um, some of my clients have, have described it as like seeing snow, like it's just oh, like yeah. snow it's even, blinding. like it's like a whiteout, like whiteout mm-hmm. conditions, mm-hmm. um, static. Like yeah. I just like don't, I'm not processing anything more. Well, yeah. you, look, you guys were not also saying that a tantrum can't turn into a meltdown. I sure. Mean, that, oh yeah. There is a continuum there too. Like, you know, yeah. and I, and I think like the, 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 commonality in the way in which we would meet the mm-hmm. tantrum or the meltdown is mm-hmm. connection and understanding. Yes. In both of those situations, um, we have someone who's not regulating well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're going to um, feel much better if the adult that's responsible for them, one, has good emotional regulation and distress tolerance themselves. <laughs> right. Um, but that it's there, it's it's a very scary, there are big emotions at play. Yeah. In 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 both of those situations. So um, but don't say this is the worst when someone says when when there is a meltdown that's occurring and we are overloaded. Like we just mm-hmm. need to reduce stimulation. We need to reduce any kind of stimulation, any kind of sensory yeah. stimulation that's going into that poor little body yeah. where we say that's willful behavior that needs yeah. to be squashed now. Yeah. And then in that moment when this person is already overloaded, overwhelmed and scared, yeah. now you get punitive. Yeah. This is where, this is where harm can be done. And yeah. Absolutely. You know, and I and I I also want to say a lot of people will be like, well, Gwen, you know, I don't want to reinforce the bad behavior. And I uh, will tell people, um, and I tell parents this all the time, no learning happens in that mode anyway. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now I get it. If it's a tantrum and I'm willfully doing something to get what I want, uh, and you can figure that out, yeah, then obviously you don't give in to that. Right. I mean, mm. like you, you mm-hmm. have other ways you, you actually may be having a conversation about it. Yeah. Yeah. What are you, yeah. what, what is it that you want or need right now? Like there's yeah. an unmet need here. Let's have a, like, let's figure that out together. Right. Um, but believing that someone's mm. meltdown is willful and yeah. maladaptive or, um, uh, behavior that is a decision that is controlled. Yeah. And now I have to teach you a lesson. This is actually it's, where I see the harm to be done. Yeah, yeah, and I can think back to my own childhood. Obviously, didn't know that I was neurodivergent and would get a lot of that. And what it did, what it taught me was to betray myself and to betray my body. Yeah, because for me, um, you know, meltdown is such a physical feeling, and, just, uh, mm. and saying that wasn't okay and there's something wrong with you for having that. I just went numb, you know. Um, it's a, it's the reason I needed to be in heavy duty therapy for as many years as I did. I had to undo that. I'm not blaming my parents. None of us knew what was going on. Um, but it definitely, uh, leaves a mark that way. And you're teaching someone to not pay attention to all these cues that serve a purpose. And then if you're doing that psychological shame on top of it, it does a double duty. I felt like, you know, something's wrong with me went through most of my childhood, I'm defective, something's wrong with me from getting those messages, right? Versus, I'm sure as a kid, I had temper tantrums, because all kids do. Um, And I didn't really know the difference between those, but I can retrospectively, and even now if I have them, it's like a felt sense, it doesn't always have to be anger. It's a felt sense of just panic, like I can't get away from this, versus being angry or willful and having a tantrum about something is, I want my way or I want power or I want, um, I don't know how to um, fix this in the moment, you know, like if you're powerless. So if I'm trying to work on a short story, I wanted this baseball mitt that my dad wouldn't buy me. Um, Him just saying no wasn't helping problem solve, like you said, versus if they said, well, okay, here's how much it costs. Here's what you need to save. Let's do a plan, how long it would take. Now you're teaching efficacy rather than the tantrum, right? Yeah. You can't do that with a meltdown. You can't, meltdowns are not 
cognitively unpackable. You can't make sense of them. It's just, it's just a physical overstimulation. Right? I mean, Dana, it's you, as you're talking, mm -hmm. um, I'm writing notes and it's, you know, the meltdown, mm -hmm. right. Is really in the physiological, physical, neurological space. Yeah. The tantrum is cognitive. Yes, exactly. The tantrum is thought-based, right? I mm -hmm. want something a certain way and yeah. I'm going to get it that way. And this is my only way to get it. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And so how do we understand both of those? Again, you guys were not saying these are mutually exclusive. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Ideas. Okay. Yeah. There, we understand there can be uh, an overlap, much like... Mm -hmm stimming and compulsions yeah stimming and yeah ocd which you guys um if that's at all confusing to you please go and listen to the episode that dana and i mm -hmm. taped about ocds and and stims because i'm still seeing a lot of i'm still seeing a lot of um uh a lot of thoughts about needing to squash stimming and i would yeah. really really like to um encourage people to not remove people's stimming that's safe of course yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, obviously, yeah. I'm not saying that there are some stims that are dangerous. Yeah. Um, and we obviously we need to address those. But like right. twirling a pen, flicking my fingers when I'm in class, nobody care. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yeah. Um yeah. so yeah. Exactly. So maybe if you are on the receiving end of a tantrum or a meltdown, because mm -hmm. that's not comfortable. As a right. parent, I can say that's not comfortable. Mm -hmm. The first thing is, is to get into your own parental space. Like yeah. I'm okay. I got this. Actually, my kiddo's kind of relying on me to pull yeah. through this. Right. That's the first thing. And I think that's where, um, in the work that I do with my families, I, I not only do self-awareness exercises with adults and, yeah. and adult yeah. kids, right. I do self-awareness exercises with parents oh, God. because <laughs> the dynamic is, is inter dependent. Yes. Um, yeah. And so we all know, we've spoke, spoken about this a lot on this channel, which is environments have the potential for oppression and suppression. Yeah. Yeah. So um, who's in that environment makes a big difference. And I'm yeah. not saying it's intentional. I mean, most, most of the times parents are, have the greatest intentions for their kids, even sure. if they're adult, yeah. ki they're adult kids. Yeah. Um, but that's the first thing. And then the second is, where is this coming from? You know, is, is this more physiological, like housed in the body, more mm -hmm. uncontrolled? Or is this more of a willful kind of yeah. manipulative yeah. stance? Yeah. And then move from those directions, but ultimately connect and understand first. Well, check yourself first, then mm -hmm. connect and understand. And then, yeah. and then really make a move. And I think that can be really, just take a pause. Like don't, yeah. just take a moment, just yeah. a moment. Yeah, and if it's if it is a meltdown, it's like that overwhelm. What's contributing to the overwhelm, and what can you remove or yep. help with? Yeah, and yeah. that talking talking is a sensory input. Yeah, yeah. You might need to say nothing. Yeah, and you said like people are afraid I'm going to reinforce it. You're not going to reinforce it. In fact, you're going to teach that person how to deal with it and learn to soothe. So you're not reinforcing, you're teaching. And those are really important delineations versus a tantrum. Yeah. yeah, if you cave in every time and give them that, then you are reinforcing it, but it's so different with a meltdown. Right, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. In meltdowns, if you can actually help the person soothe and cope, mm -hmm. you're teaching them how to soothe and cope yeah. when they yeah. feel that way. Right. In a tantrum, if you can identify the unmet need, which is mm -hmm. usually why that's there, then you're also teaching advocacy and efficacy. That's right. Yep. So, you know, yeah. in both of those ways. All right. I, yeah. I think we did it, Dana. That's good. Yep. I think we did it. Um, all right, everyone. All right, Marvels. Thanks for being here. Dana and I are going to sign off with a famous Dana saying. Oh, which yeah. is Dana? What is it? Be good to you. Be good to you. Because if you're not good to you, who will be? You know, be good to you. Yeah. Yeah. Be good to you, everyone. All right, everyone. See you in the next episode. Bye.